Hi, guys, here with Brian White, the manager of the Florence Yalls. And uh, B. White, you know, offseason, um, season went well with the playoffs. Uh, but you got a little time to take a break. How's it going? How's it going good? Um, just recovering, I guess, recuperating. Uh, body feels good now, so I can imagine how the players feel at this point. So it's going good. Back home in Texas, uh, feels like the summer's still a little bit. It's going to cool off, but no complaints so far. Now, how much time, obviously, this is your first offseason after a, a regular Frontier League season. How much time do you take in between uh, the end of the season and, and until you start thinking about next season, the roster, coaching staff, stuff like that? Yeah, um, I start thinking about that pretty quickly after. You know, there's really no breaks, no offseason from my standpoint. Uh, I'm already been talking to a few guys, uh, trying to figure out the pitching coach situation next year with uh, Rhodes moving overseas. So I've got to fill that void um, upcoming next year. But, no, I've already been talking and communicating with some players, talking with uh, Drew Martinez, seeing if there's any guy that he likes and send some information over his way. Um, you know, I want to get ahead of the game a little bit. So constantly thinking about that kind of stuff. Now, uh, obviously, the, there's going to be a lot of roster turnover, as a, is any season. What Do you have any idea of what um, kind of roster, you, how you want it to look like? In terms of, uh, do you want more speed? Do you want more athleticism? Do you want, um, you know, harder throwers? Do you want more strike throwers? What does the roster in your ideal mind look like? Yeah, I think we've had a pretty good um, formula the last five or six years here in Florence. You know, um, I think I do want to get kind of back to the mindset of starting pitching where we're keeping the ball on the ground a little bit more. Uh, with the ballpark that we play in, the ball obviously flies pretty well over there, a little bit more hitter friendly. Um, but from an offensive standpoint, I always want speed. I want guys that can play multiple positions, and I, I love doubles. So if I can find those three categories, then I think we'll be able to put a good team together um, on the field. Bullpen-wise, I do like the hard throwers. Um, I'm a fan of that. Guys that are, uh, you know, typically mid-90s, somewhere in there. Um, but also that can command the zone. I want to stay away from the walks as much as possible. So I'll sacrifice a little bit of um, stuff on the mound uh, to prevent the walks. But – uh, obviously, in a perfect world, a guy that can throw hard with uh, minimizing the blocks, but those guys typically don't stay around very long in independent baseball. <laughs> right, exactly. Now, uh, obviously, again, it was your first regular season of the Frontier League. Um, you won your division. You made the playoffs. What, what was the biggest thing that you learned as a young manager through that season? Um, probably about the halfway mark, you know, in, in the season where it did become a little bit more of a grind, um, trying to get the guys – not, not necessarily trying to get the guys, but make sure that the guys are still locked in and focused and motivated. Um, this past year, we had a good group of guys that are a little bit more mature. So they've been there and done that um, more so than seasons in the past where we had younger rookies. I think this next year might be even a little bit more of a challenge because of the COVID season that we had last year. Um, guys were a little bit more experienced than they have been in the past, even though the classification might not have represented that. Um, but that was probably the biggest challenge, I would say, or maybe the – the hardest lesson I've learned was about the halfway mark and making sure that things are still rolling smoothly versus the beginning of the season whenever guys are going to naturally be more motivated. Mm -hmm. Now, now, how much will an all-star break help that? Because obviously one of the big storylines around that midseason and even on into that, that race was guys were tired because there was no uh, real break in the middle of the season. How much will an all-star break help that? Yeah, that's, that's huge. I'm looking forward to that next year. Just having those few days off to – kind of reset your mind more so than anything. Um, obviously, the bodies are going to be a little banged up as well, but it's more that mental break. Um, we got rained out that Sunday in New Jersey, then we had two days off. So luckily during that time, we technically had three days off in a row. Um, in a regular season, we, we wouldn't normally do that. We'd have a workout day somewhere in there. But without us having that all-star break, I think just being able to get away from the field and the stadium and clear head is, is huge. Um, you know, that mental grind in baseball is something that, it's really tough to explain, it's just something that players uh, can experience and people from the outside have a hard time experiencing because you're not in there every day. Um, I guess you're a little bit more familiar with that on your end because you are being able to see those games day in and day out, and it's very similar. But from an average fan standpoint, um, that's not something that, that they can probably really appreciate so much. And now, what goes into a season like that? Like, from, from your perspective and dealing with a bunch of players, because basically you have to think – uh, for all 24 guys as if you were that player and instead of just individually thinking about yourself and, and how um, you're going to get through a season. How do you deal with 
a body through a season? How do you maintain health throughout the season? We saw quite a few shoulder injuries. You know, a couple of them were, were fluke plays like Luis Pintor. But but uh, how do you make sure that the team stays healthy through a long season? There are going to be injuries, but um, keep the little things down. Yeah, that, that's probably the toughest part, right? Um, mm-hmm. Of the job is because obviously, you know, my plan to base uh, ability is availability. So guys yep. that can be on the field as often as possible. Um, but you have to manage that. You guys that have different body ties, you guys have different uh, tolerance for pain or for injuries. Some some guys can go out there and, and play banged up. Um, I know beginning of the season, Louis did get hit in the face with, with the fastball and uh, begged to not come out of the game. And, yeah. you know, I didn't have him in the lineup the next day. And he goes, hey, Poppy, I'm playing today. I don't care what you say. <laughs> like, All right, man, get out there. So, you know, we have some tough guys like that. Um, and other, you know, there's going to be lingering injuries where, uh, it just doesn't feel right for some players. And you just have to talk to those guys and kind of get a grasp on, on what they're feeling. And they're not going to always be honest with me or with um, with our trainer. So, you know, sometimes it's taking a different route of trying to get information from somebody else to get that information out of that player. So that way I can have the most honest opinion from where that uh, guy's mindset might be at or kind of what he's feeling. Because if he's going to go in there with not the right mindset and, you know, he's might have that injury as an excuse and probably not going to get the best production out of them that day. So um, we do have to manage those things. And it's always not fun to have those uh, holes in the lineup. So to say at times where we might be missing a four or five hole, or uh, maybe you have a bullpen arm down for three or four days. Um, whenever everybody else thinks it might be healthy and technically is healthy, but just not feeling hundred percent. We want our guys to feel as best as possible as often as possible. Um, but it's just a lot of communication and trying to really force those guys to be honest with you from the very beginning. Now, looking at the season as a whole, started off on a seven-game win streak, uh, best record in the league by a half game, won the division by a half game. You had some uh, a great win in the playoffs on the road uh, with a late-inning double. What was your favorite moment from the season? From the whole season? Yeah. Um, from the whole season, I would probably have to say – Whenever we won in Southern Illinois, that sweep in Southern at the end of the season, it felt really, really good. Uh, felt positive going into that into that stadium whenever they had something to play on the line as well. Um, yep. So they didn't just roll over and hang it up, you know, that they were fighting because uh, they, they saw the playoffs host as well. Um, then, you know, checking the standings every day with Evansville, kind of seeing where we're at with them on that. Um, it's always a battle. It was a grind. But I'll probably say that Southern Series, just, just from the beginning, and, you know, putting Frank out there and he gave us those five shutout innings, which were huge for us at that time. Um, the, the confidence skyrocketed and we rolled in the Schomburg series, secured that. And unfortunately, just I don't know if we ran out of gas. It just didn't happen for us in the playoffs. Now, uh, you, you bring up Southern Illinois, and it, it's looking like there's not going to be a team in Southern Illinois for at least 2021. And, and the Southern Illinois Miners will not be a franchise in the league anymore. Obviously, a division rival, a team that uh, had some very competitive games against Florence, really the entire history of the two. Um, what's it like to lose a team like that in the division, somebody that's so competitive with you? Yeah, it's a little weird, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they, they have a beautiful stadium over there, and they've been around um, for quite a while, and, you know, good good history of winning, uh, that what they represent every year. You know, they're going to put a good product out there, and it's going to be very competitive. Um, so I am going to miss that. It did feel a little bit like a rivalry um, with Southern. Just uh, the fact that it, it would get heated at times, but we do respect them, and I, I feel like that they respected us every every time we uh, took the field against each other. You know, you see guys give their best effort every single time, as if it were a playoff game, whether it was the first series of the season or the last series of the season. So it's going to be a little different losing them because they were kind of that. Uh, I wouldn't say standard in the Frontier League, but. The, the stadium is going to be represented well, and they, they do things right over there. So it's going to be a little, a little different losing them. Now, uh, the league as a whole, this, this season due to COVID, the, there were some traveling different uh, scheduling oddities and stuff, so you didn't get to see the entire um, uh, Can-Am division, if you will. Uh, what are you most excited about to maybe get to see all 16 potentially teams next year? No, I would love that. Um, you know, hopefully we get to travel to each one of those stadiums, just the mm-hmm. fact that, it is going to be a new environment. Um, I, I think that's a challenge within itself going to, uh, I guess, in a way, stadium where you've never been before, playing a different surface with different fans, not knowing how the, the fields and dimensions actually play. I think that's pretty cool within itself. But then just having uh, the, the bigger league to me is huge, right? Having 16 teams in a league versus what 
uh, I guess it was a few years ago where it was 12 teams or 14 teams, but having a whole new side of the of the league that's going to be brand new almost kind of feels like a ALNL situation in the, in the big leagues, right? Where we might not see them as much as we will on our side of the of the league, but I think it'd be a little not necessarily playoff atmosphere, but it's going to be intense, right? Because guys want to on our side want to prove that we, we can play for real, and the Can Am side is going to want to represent the Can Am, so. They're going to let it all uh, hang out there. And I think that those teams kind of join together and kind of show who's a, uh, who's a better side of the, of the league. All right. Now we're going to shift some gears a little bit. Talked about you. Uh, first thing, uh, kind of question. We, something that is important to both of us. How about them Cowboys? <laughs> yeah. How about them Cowboys, right? <laughs> playing, playing really good football right now. Best that they've played in, in quite a while. Um, those first couple of weeks, I was like, eh, let's, let's see how it pans out. You know, they've got my hopes before and broke my heart, obviously, um, quite a few times. But they look like the real deal this year. Um, the defense is looking night and day from last year. And just being able to have those takeaways, not just from uh, Diggs himself, but they, they seem like that they're playing together, playing fast, playing energized, and playing like a team that we haven't seen uh, in the recent years, really. Now, uh I believe coming up with a schedule, the New Orleans Saints are there. And obviously that's Drew Martinez's team. Is there any friendly bet there, gentlemen's bet? No gentlemen's bet. Um, I just know that if, if the Saints do just, you know, get lucky and find out when, I, I will never hear the end of it. So I'm just praying with all my heart that, that the Cowboys win. Just want to have to hear Drew for a full season of that trash talking Jameis Winston being the Cowboys. I can't imagine how that's going to go. <laughs> Now, uh, again, your first time manager this year, um, but you, you've been involved with the Florence uh, Baseball Club for, for a while now. How did you get your start in, in coaching in baseball? Um, with them or just in general? Just in general, yeah. Just in general. So, yeah, I didn't really know what I wanted to do once I got done playing baseball. Um, it was my senior year at Texas Wesleyan, and I knew I was going to go play independent baseball. Um, I had an invite to spring training. Uh, so I took that, but we had our exit meetings. And the head coach at the time was, you know, talking to me a little bit about that. And he, at the end of it, just asked, hey, do you want to come back and be graduate assistant next year? You know, you can finish your degree. We'll give you some scholarship and money for that. Just come up out with the team. So I did that. And I was like, okay, it's not bad. I, I kind of like it. You know, I've always loved talking about baseball and being around baseball. But obviously, coaching was going to be a little new to me. So that's how it started. Then um, he ended up getting the same head coach, ended up getting me a head coaching job in Colorado for a summer league. Uh, collegiate summer league so that's kind of how it kick started then I jumped on with Pelican 15 and ever since then I kind of knew that that's just what I wanted to do but I started college baseball jumped bounced around a little bit between NAI JUCO division three um, a little bit of all that before I uh, fully made the commitment to professional baseball and that's kind of whenever I knew I, that, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you describe your managing style? We, we kind of talked about the day-to-day -day and making sure um, players are mentally engaged and physically, you know, well. What's your managing style game one through 96? I just want to make sure that our guys are, are playing free. Um, that's kind of the main thing. So if I need to say something, I'll say something. But if it's controlled within the clubhouse or a guy can uh, on the team has a power to take the rest of the team within them, then I'm going to let them do that. Because to me, uh, games are won and lost with players, right? I, I think mm. the coaching staff has a big part to do with it, uh, obviously. But over coaching or over analyzing or being too strict, I, I think, has a negative effect uh, on players. I think that there's a balance on that. But if a clubhouse within the players, if they can come together and unify, I think that that's where the best teams happen. Um, than anything that we can provide on top of that as coaching staff, it's just that much more, you know. We've always said that. We're just a tool for them. Uh, we want to be, uh, whether it's a hammer or a screwdriver or whatever it may be, just come use us whenever you need us, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have the ability to take things under yourself and y'all can communicate with each other and make sure that y'all are on the same page um, and we're all one team, I think that that's the best ability for, for the team atmosphere. And you'll see guys grow closer and you'll see some frustration along the way and some, some pickups along the way. But if they have the, um, I guess, just the maturity or, or the... Um, experience to take it under the wings of some of the older guys I think that that's where the team comes together a little bit better so I try to stay not necessarily hands off I do a little talking to the guys a little working with the guys 
Um, defense is foremost to me. Uh, if you can't pitch and play defense, you can't win. So I, I do want to put emphasis on those things and base running. But as far as the whole team aspect goes, I think uh, you have to have the leaders of the team to, to take control of it if you want to really take it to another level. Now, you mentioned uh, Dennis Pelfrey earlier, who um, y- you coached under uh, for quite some time before he took an affiliated job. And uh, he obviously had success this year. He won uh, a championship in his division. What kind of things did you take away from him? Uh, quite a bit, actually. You know, um, he wasn't afraid to talk in the, uh, in the clubhouse. So anytime we got into the locker room or into the coach's office after the game, he was very open. Um, and it was never – never awkward or anything like that to ask him questions. He wanted to talk about anything uh, baseball related during the game, what we saw, what, what we didn't like, what we did like, um, if we didn't understand something. So I got to pick a lot from him. Then really the type of a uh, team that he's built is, is the same type that I like, or at least that I've grown to like. Um, not necessarily grabbing those power hitters or, or grabbing guys that just throw hard. You know, there's way more detail that, that take place in the game that allows you to have a winning team and a winning organization. Versus just, um, I guess, uh, statistics that you see on paper or the velos that they put up or the exit velos or whatever it may be. There's so much more to it. And playing the game the right way is really what I picked from him the most. And on top of that, from the clubhouse aspect, is making sure that the clubhouse is good. Um, if you have a bad clubhouse and it doesn't matter how talented your team is, you're never going to win games because they won't play for each other. Um, so make sure that the right pieces are in place and the right personalities are in place or really key factors I've taken from them. Uh, and now I got two more questions for you. First one is, uh, what are you most looking forward to? Obviously, we have quite some time before spring training starts next year, but looking forward most to in year two for you? Uh, really repeat, I, I want to build off of that. I think that we love some games out there on the field that we can correct. Um, probably next year, with, with Chad being gone, I'll probably mm-hmm. take a little bit more of a role with the pitchers, take them under my wing a little bit more. Um, unless I do find a pitching coach, I, I truly trust as much as I trusted him. Um, but I, I think that there are some things that we could do a little bit better, clean up a little bit from the, not necessarily offensive approach, but, you know, picking the right times to run, picking the right times to, to lay that bunt down, picking the right times um, or knowing when to get that guy over, when to drive a guy in, stuff like that, little things that I think that could be a little bit better at communicating with our players. Um, but again, we did have a very experienced team last year. This year, we'll see what we have coming in. Um, I want to say that they're going to leave the rookie number the same this year. Mm. Upcoming is a rumor, so it should be 10 rookies again, but we'll, I'm sure we'll get a little bit younger um, with these guys that just got out of college. So this will be a little bit more teaching, I think, going on this year than it was last year. Now, I mentioned that there's quite some time before spring training. What are you looking forward most to in the offseason? Um, well, over here, I, I do have a facility, so I get to work with a bunch of little kids, um, whether it's lessons or team stuff. We have a few teams, so I've been doing that mostly since I've been uh, home. Um, they're doing league games and tournament games, so I'll go out and watch them or help them on the field and the dugout, um, still give them lessons and whatnot. So I enjoy that. You know, I just I, I love baseball. I love being out there. I love uh, spending time with those guys, and it's a different mindset with those little ones, right, because you have to start from scratch, so. It's a, it's a real good reminder of, of how simple baseball can be, and at the same time, how complicated it can be. So, you know, make sure that we get back to the basics. This is what's going to work at any level. But teaching that mindset and having a conversation with the kid, and like, man, some of my uh, older guys have the same issues, right? But it's just a little different scale, but it's always the same recurring issues. So, to me, I, I love working with those kids, and it just reminds me of how fun the game is. And the importance of uh, some of the details in the game and some things that are overanalyzed. Awesome. Well, thank you very much again. This is manager Brian White of the Florence Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, how's it going?